There are 17 things that I've figured out that just do not make sense to me now that I'm in my 50s and I thought I would share with them with you today. You'll also hear I've got a really croaky voice and I'm still full of cold but we're going to do this because I've been putting it off for a few days and I think I'll feel better for it. So here we go. The first thing that just doesn't make any sense to me since I turned 50 is watching TV without any subtitles. I don't know if it's an age thing or if it just makes a lot of sense or if people's accents are just getting harder to understand but I can't watch TV without any subtitles anymore. I have to have the subtitles on. And it's really interesting because so does my husband now. And if we go anywhere and there aren't any subtitles, we both kind of look at each other and go, I have no idea what's going on. (laughs) Let me know in the comments. Anybody else need subtitles on their TV just to be able to understand what's going on? Okay, number two, trying to drink any other kind of tea and enjoy it other than Yorkshire tea. (laughs) Yorkshire tea is the best tea in the world. I've heard they've even shipped it across to the USA now because it is that good. I've tried others. We've tried cheaper versions from the supermarket that claim to be as good as Yorkshire tea. They don't taste too bad, but you have to have twice as many tea bags just to get the same result. So they might be a bit cheaper, but you're using twice as many. So definitely not a goer. Yorkshire tea all the way. Number three, sleeping in until midday. Do you know, when I was younger, I could quite easily have a nice lie in and just stay in bed till midday and and not get out and I might not be sleeping till midday but I was quite comfortable just chilling in bed maybe reading a book watching tv we don't even have a tv in the bedroom anymore the idea of sleeping in till midday is just anathema to me these days I tend to wake up around about eight o'clock regardless of what time I go to sleep and I might lie for 10, 15 minutes, half an hour at the most, and then I have to get up. So the idea of being able to sleep in till midday just doesn't make any sense to me anymore. And it's such a shame because I used to love just having like lazy, lazy Sunday mornings and, and not getting out of bed till lunchtime. Oh, no, doesn't make any sense anymore. The fourth thing that doesn't make any sense to me now that I've turned 50, I mean, I'm 58, so I'm nearly 60 to be fair, is since when did the government allow 12 year olds to drive cars? Because when I look around at some of the the youngsters driving, they look about 12. I'm sure they're not much older than 12. They look so young and yet they're driving cars. Oh, it doesn't make sense to me at all. How can that, how can that happen? How can they look so young? It's like, you know, you're getting old when the policemen look very, very young. Well, now the drivers, like literally, they don't even look like they should be in secondary school yet. And they're driving cars. Does that make any sense? The fifth thing that kind of doesn't make sense to me is... Why I have a very nice four bedroomed house with all the amenities I could want, all of my things in it, and yet I have this urge to live in a tiny house on wheels. We're in the process of looking for a camper van so we can go and spend our spare time in a tiny little box (laughs) with nothing in there of our belongings because we won't have an awful lot of space. I mean, there will be some things of our belongings, but you get what I mean. I t- it doesn't make sense, but I'm not, I'm not worrying about this one because I cannot wait to get my camper van and go off and explore the world. But it does make me smile that we've got this and four bedrooms, loads of space, lovely garden. And I want to go and stay instead in this tiny little box on wheels. Oh, doesn't make sense. The sixth thing tights. Now, I think in America, do you call them pantyhose? I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but tights. Oh, just tights don't make sense to me anymore, at least not getting in and out of them. 
they're not the most attractive things at the best of times, let's be honest. But there was a time when I could at least get into them without looking like some sort of Harry Houdini on speed. <laughs> because I literally, I don't know, it doesn't matter what I do. I get one leg in, the other leg twisted. I get both legs in, the whole thing is twisted. Uh, I, I, my legs are up in the air trying to get them on. Honestly, I, I, if it wasn't so embarrassing to show you, I'd take a bit of B-roll to show you me putting on tights, but I'm not going there. It is hilarious. Why? What have they changed tights? Have they changed the the construction of them so that women over fifty can no longer navigate their way into them? I don't know. Anyway, tights do not make sense to me anymore. Okay, the number seven is housework, or at least stressing about housework. Now, don't get me wrong. We all have to do our housework. You know, we we. There are things that we have to do. But I used to get so, so stressed if things were out of place. I am the world's most untidy person. ADHD brain doesn't go with being tidy or organised. But I think I carried so much shame about my disorganisation and untidiness that if anybody came to the house and the, the, the living spaces that were visible weren't pristine I would be so embarrassed and so so stressed about it now I think do you know what the house is clean I can't take the credit for that to be fair we have a brilliant cleaner but even before she did you know it wasn't a cleanliness thing but I do have a lot of clutter and I'd have to go around if I knew somebody was coming I would go around stressing about getting rid of all my clutter and making sure everything was tidy before they arrived. And it's such an unnatural way for me to live. So now I kind of, that, that stress doesn't make sense to me anymore. If people visit and the place is a bit cluttered, that's me. That's who I am. So that stress around housework is what doesn't make sense to me anymore. Not housework itself. Number eight, labels on food and labels on beauty products, telling you what's in them or what to do with them. Instructions on beauty products. What is that all about? They are so, so tiny. You can't see them. Even with my glasses on, I cannot read them. I'd have to get a magnifying glass just to be able to read a food label, which isn't much use if you're wandering around the supermarket and you're wanting to read the food label on a piece of food. Oh, it just doesn't make sense. Why do they make them so tiny? If it's so small, you can't read it. Don't bother putting it on there. It just doesn't make sense to me. Number nine, stilettos. I'm not sure stilettos ever really made sense, although I did wear them, you know, sort of really ridiculously pointy heels, high pointy heels, and we totter along trying to stand up on them. They don't make sense to me anymore. I got rid of all of my high heeled shoes a couple of years ago. I am a trainers or sneakers or pumps or whatever you want to call them, or like loafers type of girl now, or give me some nice chunky boots, but stilettos, no, no way. And I did hear somewhere that, um, I don't know how true this is, that the, the force of, from a, a, a normal size woman, whatever that is, um, on a stiletto heel is the equivalent to the weight of an elephant. So no, they don't make sense to me. Number 10, gossip. When I was younger and I worked in a, like a, in, in a job and there were groups of women, not just the women to be fair, men as well, that always seemed to be gossip. People were always talking about what other people were up to. Well, and it was so judgmental and to my shame, I was definitely guilty of it. And now I think, do you know what? Life is way too short to spend it gossiping about other people's business when it's not our business at all. So gossip magazines, or just the, the whole idea of having nothing better to do than pull somebody else apart 
behind their back when they're not there to defend themselves. That just doesn't make sense to me anymore. It's, it's just a horrible thing, isn't it? It's a horrible thing to do, to gossip about people. Now that I look back, I always think, when we're gossiping about what other people are doing, and we're doing it in such a judgy way, quite often it's a reflection of all the things we kind of feel about ourselves that we're not happy with, that we kind of project onto other people. So, yeah, gossip, definitely not for me. Definitely not for me. Number 11, sales. You know, like store sales, even Black Friday sales don't make sense to me anymore. And, and especially, the, you know, the old days, I don't know if it still happens, where we've got Next, a clothes store Next in the UK. I think it's abroad. I don't know. And they'd have their sort of seasonal sales and people would be camping out overnight outside of the store so that they could get in and grab a bargain. And I've never, I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. I have to say, this isn't just an over 50s thing. I've never queued up for a sale, but I have probably been a little bit sucked into the January sales and things like that. But we end up spending money we don't have on things we don't need and queuing up for hours to do so. It just doesn't make sense. Nowadays, if I want something, I, I want it because I want it. And if I get a bargain with it, brilliant. But the stress of waiting to see if it's still going to be available when it's in the sale at a lower price. If I have to do that, my guess is I probably don't need it or want it that much. If I really, really needed it or I really, really wanted it, then waiting for the sale isn't going to make a difference to whether or not I want it. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a bargain. If I happen to need or want something and when I go to buy it, it happens to be on sale... Woo! Bonus! I'm happy with it. But I do not understand the, the logic in buying stuff because it's in the sale that you don't need. Now, my husband would probably argue that, I, that I'm talking rubbish here. But genuinely, I just don't, I don't get it. And I will never, ever, ever queue and hustle and bustle and get the elbows out just to be able to get a bargain. Number 12, dressing to impress. I think there were times when I was younger that I really felt that if I didn't have the right make of clothes or, you know, I wasn't dressed in the right way that I would be somehow judged, probably gossiped about. Uh, or it would be it would be disadvantageous to me in some way. And I think as I've got older, certainly in the last sort of five years or so, I kind of will wear what I want to wear now. And I don't necessarily dress to impress. You can see today I'm in sort of sweats. I've got no makeup on. If you like me, you will like me regardless of what I'm wearing. If you don't like me, it won't matter if I'm wearing you know, Versace or whatever, it will not matter. You won't like me. So I'm not going to dress to impress anymore. That said, when we go dancing, we've got we've got a week, a dance week coming up and there's a gala night. We go on cruises and they have like dress to impress nights or formal evenings. I love getting dressed up. I love doing my makeup, wearing nice clothes, but I do it because it makes me feel nice, not because I'm trying to impress other people. Um, so yeah, that whole dressing to impress does not make sense to me. I have probably been guilty of it in the past and I'm not sure it's made that much difference, to be honest. Number 13, always being in a hurry to get everywhere. I think part of that is because I hate being late. So I would always be in a hurry to get where I was going because I didn't want to be late. Even if that meant I was there half an hour early, I would still hurry to get there. I used to drive way too fast. Everything had to be immediate. And I think maybe this is an ADHD thing as well. I think it probably is. But I'm learning to just slow down and not be in such a hurry all of the time. I 
I'm not great with delayed gratification, so I want things here and now, right now, right now. <laughs> but just hurrying everywhere, being in a hurry, it's just, yeah, I don't know, it's just uncomfortable and stressful. Okay, number 14, and this kind of goes with the housework thing from earlier. Ironing bedding does not make any sense to me anymore. I used to iron quilt covers and I'd iron sheets. Do you know what? Life is too short to iron a sheet. Believe me, life is too short to iron sheets. So they are no longer, no longer part of my uh, list of jobs to do. I do not iron bedding because why would you? I, just give it a good shake, give it a good sort of pull around, push the, the duvet cover in it, shake it about a bit, just smooth it out with your hands. <laughs> it does, it does. As soon as it's slept in for a night, it gets creased anyway. So no, 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 I'm not ironing. I'm not ironing bedding. Nightclubs, nightclubs and busy bars. I don't think I ever really enjoyed them. But now they just don't make sense to me at all. Give me a nice, quiet restaurant where we can sit and have a lovely, relaxing evening meal. Ah, oh, bliss. But the idea of a nightclub where everybody's jostling into one another and... I don't know, maybe I am just getting old, but all I could think about in a in a busy nightclub now is, oh my God, if there was a fire, how would I get out of here? Where are the fire exits? Oh, it's a bit close, a bit close to my comfort, but I don't like all these people bumping into me. I just, I can't, I can't imagine going to a nightclub. It must be 10 years since I was last in a nightclub. And yeah, they just don't appeal. When we go cr on cruises, they normally have a nightclub. It's not a place that we normally go to. We avoid them. I give me a nice tea dance where we can do our waltz and ballroom and a little bit of Latin dancing. Uh, but no, no. They used to call them discos, didn't they, in our day? But no, definitely not. Okay, number 16. Dresses that don't have pockets. They do not make any sense to me anymore. Just put pockets in them. Just put pockets in them. Dresses with pockets are the way to go. Dresses without pockets? No, don't understand it. And I know that the people who are into kind of styling will say, oh no, because you don't want pockets near your hips. It makes your hips look bigger. No, just give me the pockets. I like pockets in my dresses. When I'm standing, I like to put my hands in my pocket. I like to have a tissue in my pocket. Men get pockets in their trousers. If I wear trousers, I have pockets. Give me pockets in my dresses and I'll be very, very happy. Dresses without pockets, no, don't make sense to me anymore. And finally, number 17. Of the things that no longer make sense to me now I'm in my 50s. G-strings, G-string knickers. When were they ever comfortable? <laughs> when did anybody ever wear a G-string and go, oh, this feels comfortable? <laughs> No, give me the big knickers. Give me the big knickers every time. They're just, yeah, so much more comfortable. G-strings. I don't know if they ever made sense, but they are definitely not making any sense in my 50s. Just give me the big knickers. We used to call them harvest knickers. You know, big knickers. Like, have you ever seen uh, Bridget Jones's diary where um, Hugh Grant sort of lifts a skirt and goes, whoa, they're big knickers. Uh, we call them harvest knickers. Knickers where all is safely gathered in. On that note, I am going to leave you with my 17 things that don't make sense. Let me know in the comments what things just don't make sense to you in your 50s. Humorous, humorous things that just don't make sense to you in your 50s. And if you've enjoyed this, do me a favour, give me a like and a, leave a comment. I um, would be so grateful. You can hear my voice is going. The cold is still here, but, <clears throat> but I've had fun making this one. I hope you've had fun listening. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>